This is part of my ongoing series interviewing my brother, David Berger, who is a fantastic world traveler and blogs at davidberger.net. He recently returned from three years spent with the U.S. Peace Corps in rural Zambia. And uh, today I want to talk a little bit or ask you a little bit about uh, food, both uh, what the regular and normal food norms are in the region, as well as uh, you traveled all over sub-Saharan Africa, and uh, I'm sure that meant all sorts of quirky eats. When we came and visited you, there were definitely a couple incidents where we ran into some, uh, let's call it alternative foods uh, <laughs> compared to what we were used to. Uh, so yeah, uh, please tell everybody a little bit about uh, what kept you going. Yeah, well, um, this is one of my favorite topics. Uh, food is always an amazing way to get to know people, to understand people, and food and communal meals and eating together is really what brings people together. And during my service, eating with my host family and sharing meals with my counterparts and uh, with community groups that I worked with in the field was one of the most intimate ways that we could get to know each other and that they could become comfortable with my presence and that I could get to better understand what their issues were. You know, those mealtime conversations were fantastic. But on to the real meat of the issue is the meals themselves. Now, Zambia has a very interesting staple food. Um, and it's not like the United States, where there is no real staple food. I mean, you could argue that the U.S., that maybe pizza or Hamburgers. a hamburger or a steak or pasta is the staple food. But as you can see, there are so many different opinions, so many options, that you don't really have this idea of a staple food here. Zambia absolutely does, to the point that if you don't feed a guest in Shima, which I'll explain in a little bit, they'll enjoy the meal, thank you for the meal, but then if you ask them, you know, how they're feeling, if they're full, they say, oh, well, I haven't eaten, because you haven't included the staple food. So in Shima, uh, which is Ubwadi, in Bemba, which is where I was placed with that tribal group, is corn mush. <laughs> and it doesn't sound very appetizing, but it grows on you. Um, basically, you take a rough ground cornmeal, uh, either roller meal or breakfast meal, and breakfast meal is a little more processed, so they take the kernel of the corn out before they grind it. And then... Uh, Basically, you add it to warm water and stir, and then you cover the pot and let the water come to a boil, and then you continue adding more and more corn flour, um, roller meal, until it makes a uh, firm paste. Then you continue to stir and stir and add a little bit more flour as the water is absorbed, and you end up with a hardened kind of like grits or polenta type consistency and then you close the pot turn off the heat and let it bubble for a couple minutes more and then it should have a little bit of a firm outer texture so that you can lump it into a little utensil so you tear off a little bit and then you put it in your hand and then you push in your thumb and you create a little dimple and you use that to eat the rest of the meal now the staple meals that I had were beans in Shima uh, and either katapa greens, which is cassava leaves, or pumpkin leaves, or uh, on really exciting days, we'd get Chinese cabbage, <laughs> which was pretty nice, and uh, tomatoes and what's called supu, which is basically diced tomatoes and oil and salt. <laughs> and you mix that together, and that creates uh, the relish that goes in with the vegetables or with the beans and uh, you eat that with the enshima. So that was my staple diet. Now I also uh, introduced rice. Um, that was because of my own preference. I wanted to have more rice in my diet and I like uh, having rice. So I would buy rice specifically and then I would share that with my host family. Another intervention uh, that is available on the market in terms of protein is what's called soya pieces. And uh, many of you outside of the U.S. are probably quite familiar with soya pieces. Mm, essentially, they are dried tofu. They are soya bean meal mixed with starch and then made into chunks and dried. And what you do is you rehydrate those chunks and then you add 
anything really to try and give them a better flavor and then you mix them in and you eat them and you get soy protein which uh, allows you to add more protein into your diet and those are available relatively cheaply they're easy to store because it's dried so they don't spoil very easily um, and once you get them seasoned they can be quite tasty so we've talked a little bit about in Shima and a little bit about the normal food which would be beans um, some type of green, which would either be a leaf of some sort, including pumpkin leaves or even potato leaves. Um, there was also wild amaranth, which is a type of spinach available. Um, but then there come some, not necessarily oddities, but um, specialties that were found uh, only in my experience in Zambia. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that other cultures eat these as well. But one that I really came to enjoy, surprisingly enough, um, and that I actually dried and carried with me as a snack, was ifishimu. And ifishimu are caterpillars. And they come in a couple of varieties. Um, there are white and black ones that have spikes that you have to eat very, very carefully because uh, you have to make sure you chew up the spikes so they don't stab you in the tongue or throat. Um, and then the other ones, which are green to start with but turn yellow when they're dried, um, are smooth and uh, are actually quite delicious. And um, you would usually eat those either fried or um, rehydrated with a little bit of the previously mentioned supu, which is that uh, oil and tomato and salt mixed in. Uh, and then you'd have them with nshima and beans, or you would have them as the protein of the meal.